Hey there, everybody. In this episode, we're hoping that this is the last episode of working on this fireplace circuit. We just finished up the second chip for the fault indicator. Over here, the emergency cutoff is all done. If you're not to this point, a link is popping up in the corner. Let's jump right into this. So we are going to group these together. This will be, what's going on there? Let's see if I can start editing this again. Oh no. All right. So we are going to group the these four NAND gates together. There we go, now it's working. Um, and these will go on this last fault indicator. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a label here and I'm just gonna call this fault indicator, fault indicator three. So we've got fault indicator chip two, chip one, and then this one I recently added, this is our IC chip four. Now all of these are integrated circuit chips. Um, so I just wanted to label that these ones are, are doing the fault indicator. So let's check this out. We're gonna label this one one, this one two, this one three, and this one is gonna be gate four on that chip, just like we do here. One, two, three, and four. So we need to look at uh, this one over here. Um, so this was coming from our, our fault indicator, this was fault indicator chip one, this was fault indicator chip two. So we're gonna go from chip one, gate three, two, one. So fault indicator chip one, pin three, or there we go. Where's three? There's three. So there's our output. And this is going to go to our input. Oh, one thing I forgot from the very beginning is we, uh, in the last episode, we tested it to make sure that everything was working and it was. So I'm going to delete these long wires that are going to these LEDs. We don't really need those anymore. Um, except they kind of told us where we were plugging stuff into. So that was kind of helpful. Uh, let's go because they were coming out of this chip right here. So let's stick with that same chip and find four, output four, and go into one again. So this one right here, output four, going into our other one B. And then we can see that one, uh, gate one is going into gate two. So the output of one here is going into two. Output of one here is going into the input of two. So that's all covered. And we're gonna do something very, very similar to this one right here. So we're finding uh, the fault indicator chip two, and we're gonna go three to three, and then four to three. So let's find this one right here, so fault. Uh, this is our output. I'm going to come up and around. That's our output. Here's our input. And actually, I don't know why I started right next to the chip. I can bring that over there. So I will tell you, some teachers, as you can see, I have some of the wires that are really close to the chip, and I have some of the wires like these that are away from the chip. Um, for the most part, I was taught to keep the wires away from the chip on the, on the outside because then it makes it easy if you ever have a bad chip or a chip goes bad, you can easily pop it out and put it back in. Um, whereas if you have wires coming over the top, then uh, in something like this where they're all closer to the chip, chances are you can pop it out and then you might knock a wire. It's kind of potato-potato. Either way you go. Now, I, I know 
another teacher next door, he teaches his classes to keep the wires close to the chip. So you're using shorter wires. It, it really doesn't matter. Okay, um, let's find output of four going into three. All right, and then three goes into four. All right, and we are going to come back to here and this one right here is we're going to actually use integrated circuit four. It's the same one that we used here. So we are going to um, let me grab an eraser and erase these because we're done with those. All right, so if we look here and we come back to integrated chip four, um, one is over here, so that's used from our emergency cutoff. I'm gonna use just kind of this top, one of these top outputs here, so because my wires are on the top here, so I'm gonna come over here and then we're gonna bounce over to the light. So uh, like I said, this one's taken, and I'll just use this one right here, the third gate. There, so we want to go from the um, last chip here from two to the input of three. So let's find so output of two, and let's find an input there. And again, four. So let's find the output of four. And we'll come over here to input of three. And then finally, we've got that one right there. And we've got this one right here, which is the output of three. Okay, so let's find Output three, go into a light. Output three, go into a light. And then output of two here, go into the other light. And now, according to this truth table, the emergency cutoff or the blue light needs to turn on at row seven, 11, 13, 14, and 15. The fault indicator needs to only be off at one, I'm sorry, at zero and at 15. So here we go, start simulating. Let's turn all of these lights off, or all these switches off. Okay, so remember seven and 11, and then 13, 14, 15, and then this is only off at zero and 15, so. Okay, turned on, so we're at, sorry, zero, one, binary two, three, binary four, five, six, seven, there it goes, eight, nine, 10, 11, there it goes, back on, 12, 13, 14, and 15, and it turns off. Perfect. There you go. That's the end. You did it. Save your work. Show your teacher. Hit that share button right there. Uh, invite people. Copy that link. Turn it in on Google Classroom or, or Canvas, whatever you're using. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Good job.